Let us pray. O God, the Father of lights, who by the entrance of thy word giveth light unto the soul, grant to us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that, being taught of thee in holy scripture, we may receive with faith the words of eternal life and be made wise unto salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Verses 68 and 69 from John chapter 6. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Often people think faith is blind faith. You just believe something because you believe it. This is not faith as the church understands it. Faith is accepting something as true based on evidence. Many say that this evidence must be capable of scientific proof, but don't apply that standard to the rest of life. Do you have scientific proof that your parents or your spouse really love you? You accept it as true when they say they love you because you trust them, trust based on what you know of them. What we are to believe as Christians, preserved in the scriptures and summarised in the creed, is to be accepted as true because it is revealed by God, especially through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the truth incarnate. God and his word are trustworthy and so worthy of our faith. To believe something is not necessarily to fully comprehend it. I believe that my car can get me from A to B, and I have good evidence for that because I've experienced it, but don't ask me to explain how it works. St Anselm of Canterbury reminds us of the true order of things when he speaks of faith-seeking understanding. We will never understand the truths of the creed as we are meant to unless we first believe them. However, if we believe them, part of our growth as Christians involves deepening our knowledge and understanding of them and their place in the faith as a whole. We cannot excuse our unbelief by saying that we don't understand or see the relevance of some aspect of the faith. But that's to put the cart before the horse. To choose to accept something as true or not is independent of whether we understand it or see its relevance. We can see two very different responses in the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said many astounding things to the crowd he fed with five loaves and two fish, such as, I am the bread which came down from heaven. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. He saved the most shocking thing for last, however. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live for ever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Hearing this, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? If our Lord meant to say that he is only speaking symbolically or metaphorically, and we're not to eat his flesh in any objective way, he could have clarified this. He didn't, but made it even more blunt and explicit, introducing it with words emphasising the definite truth and authority of what he says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Our Lord's hearers were not wrong when they commented, this is an hard saying, Who can hear it? However, just because it is hard does not mean it is not to be believed. It is impossible for us to fully understand how we receive Christ's body and blood in Holy Communion. 
But it is no easier to understand fully a lot of other things which we still believe in. The very fundamental things of love and the beginning of life and the end of life are good examples. As a Christian, I believe in creation. Yet I do not understand how God created all that is visible and invisible. I believe that Christ is uniquely God and man in one person. Yet I do not understand how. I believe that Christ rose bodily from the tomb. Yet I do not understand how. I believe that Christ ascended in that risen and glorified body to the right hand of his Father in heaven. Yet I do not understand how. Why is it any more difficult to believe Christ when he says, This is my body and this is my blood? even when it still appears to the human eye to be ordinary bread and wine. This is not a case of believing six impossible things before breakfast, as the quote from Alice in Wonderland goes. Just because our human minds cannot understand these truths of God doesn't mean that they are actually impossible or unreasonable. We accept these things as true on the evidence of him who speaks it. These things are revealed truth, preserved in the scriptures, and we can trust them because we can trust God. This is even more true when we hear Christ's teaching in the Gospels, not because they are inspired scripture in a way different to the rest of the Bible, but because in them we hear what comes from the lips of him who is the truth incarnate. We express this acknowledgement when we stand for the gospel reading during our services of Holy Communion. Unlike the response of the majority of the crowd, we hear the genuine attitude of faith voiced by St. Peter towards the end of John chapter 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. The challenge for us all is to make Peter's wonderful words our own every day. Can you? As St Anselm said, the order is faith seeking understanding. We believe what Christ says because of who he is. He is the Son of the living God, and he alone has the words of eternal life, which can save our souls now and for heaven. Yet if we believe and love Christ and his truth, we'll want to understand it. Hence people have come up with lots of theories for how Holy Communion works, the most famous being transubstantiation. The only clue our Lord gives us here in John chapter 6 is that it is worked by the Holy Spirit. He says in verse 63, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. Thus, answering the question, after what manner are the body and blood of Christ taken and received in the Lord's Supper, our Church of Ireland Catechism reminds us that it is only after a heavenly and spiritual manner and the mean whereby they are taken and received is faith. The foundation and heart of the Christian faith is our Lord Jesus Christ. We must begin and end with him, accepting what he reveals to us for our salvation, even when we don't understand it all. Every time we hear something from God which we find difficult to believe in is an opportunity to grow and strengthen the muscles of our faith, reminding ourselves of who he is and his trustworthiness 
and choosing to listen to him. May we all have the same attitude expressed in the poem attributed to Queen Elizabeth I, which, though particularly referring to Holy Communion, apply to all revealed truth generally. Christ was the word who spake it. He took the bread and brake it. And what his word doth make it, that I believe and take it. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, dominion, glory and power, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>